Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking about four atomic trends, I mean periodic trends, excuse me, and these are atomic radius, effective nuclear charge, ionization energy, and electronegativity. So first let me explain what these mean to you. Um, atomic radius really talks about the size of the atom. So let's say like you have this circle, right? And of course the radius is half of its diameter. So that's really what we're talking about when we say atomic radius. We're looking at um, the radius of the atom, and the bigger the radius, the bigger the atom. Effective nuclear charge really talks about how positive the nucleus is, or the strength of it, because the more positive the nucleus is, the more it's going to attract electrons. And that also goes hand in hand with uh, electron shielding. So basically, let's envision this nucleus, right? And there's these different shells that contain electrons. And what really happens is these electrons that are closer to the nucleus, these shield the um, positive uh, attractive forces of the nucleus from these electrons. So the outermost electrons really feel the, um, the attractive forces from the nucleus a little less than the ones that are closer to it. And then ionization energy is the amount of energy that you need to pull away the first valence electron. If you're talking about second ionization energy, then that's the amount of energy that you need to pull away the second valence electron and so on and so forth. So now electronegativity just really talks about how much um, the atom attracts electrons to itself. So uh, if you've seen the water molecule before, and if you've um, looked at its properties, we say that oxygen is a really electronegative element, which means it pulls the electrons from the hydrogens to itself. And that's why hydrogen has a partial positive charge, and oxygen usually has a partial negative charge. Okay? So, this is how I remember the periodic trends. I always look at fluorine. Fluorine is your friend for periodic trends. So for atomic radius, I say that fluorine has the smallest atomic radius because atomic radius decreases down a row of the periodic table. And that's because um, you see the atomic number increases when you go to the right which means its number of protons are increasing. And the more protons you have, the more it attracts those electrons. And the more it attracts those electrons, the more the electrons are going to want to be closer to the nucleus, right? So because they have more protons, they're going to attract the electrons closer and closer which gives them a smaller size. And then second one, effective nuclear charge, um, that increases as you go to the right. So fluorine has a very high effective nuclear charge. And I'd also like to note that nuclear charge is denoted like this, Z, and then EFF as the subscript. So, Fluorine has a very high effective nuclear charge because it has many protons. And um, the next one is ionization energy. So fluorine has a very high ionization energy. Remember, ionization energy is the amount that you need to put in to take away uh, its valence electron. And it wants to hold on to, the, to its electrons because this also has to do with its Lewis structure, by the way. So fluorine's Lewis structure looks something like this. It's missing one more valence electron to have a complete shell. So it really wants to get another electron, and it doesn't want to lose any of these electrons. It doesn't want to give any of its electrons away. So it's going to be really tough to get its valence electron out, which is why you need a lot of energy to pull away its, valence, its first valence electron. And last thing is electronegativity. 
So fluorine is extremely electronegative because it really wants that last electron to complete its valence shell just so it can be like a noble gas and become more stable. So I remember that fluorine is the smallest, it has the smallest atomic radius, it has the greatest effective, well, some of the greatest effective nuclear charge, um, it has a very high ionization energy, and its electronegativity is extremely high as well. So if I'm asked, like, uh, is the atomic radius of beryllium larger or uh, carbon larger, I would say that beryllium has a greater atomic radius because um, it's farther away from fluorine and carbon is closer to fluorine. So anything that's closer to fluorine or in this area is going to be smaller. And you can do that with the other periodic trends too.